Hello, and welcome back to our Women's History Month podcast. My name is Kelly Ford. I'm the creative director here at COBOL and AWOL, and I have the honor of introducing today's episode. Presented by COBOL Music and AWOL, this week's conversation is between two of our incredible a and executives, Eve Fairley Chikwe and Laura Frias. Eve and Laura both started off on the COBOL side of our business before transitioning over to our recordings division at AWOL. In this conversation, they speak to their unique experiences as women dealmakers in the industry, how they got their start in music, and reflections on the last year in lockdown. We are so thrilled to share this next podcast with you. Let's have a listen. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, good. I'm glad that we're doing this. I know. I feel like we had we have a very long overdue catch up, and it's it's fun that we get to do it over this. You know, I think there's yeah, lots exactly. to talk about. Um, yeah. I guess we'll give a little bit of background on, you know, on the listeners and how we know each other. Um, so even I go back to 2016 when I started working at Cobalt on the A&R publishing side. She was already working on the publishing side um, in London and I worked out of the LA office. And ever since, just she's been someone that I've always admired in terms of just her taste and, and just how kind and nice but at the same time badass she is um and we've had actually the chance to actually spend a lot of time together in person as well both in LA and in London so here we are now (laughs) I'm so glad that we are and yeah like you said Laura like we've known each other for such a long time now and I've just always loved like the music that you're into the scene that you're in like everything has just always been so cool and I've Whenever, like, we've been able to hang out, I've just thought, like, oh, Laura's got the best taste and just knows what's up. And I just think seeing your transition from publishing over to records and then the roster that you're building on the record side has just been so amazing to see from from my side over here. And I hope that we can hang out in London and or when I'm next in LA again soon. I know, hopefully very soon. But thank you for that. That's very, very kind of you. Yeah, I think... You know, we really haven't, you know, talked about just like how we really have had a similar trajectory path and and how we've just like really been, you know, even though from across the pond, like been very much, I guess, like peers in in how we've moved from like the publishing in our business over to the recording side. And, you know, likewise, I, I, you know, you work with some of my favorite artists, Little Sims, Tamara's Killing It. Um, It's just been amazing seeing you carve out your space at AWOL and, yeah, it's been, I mean, you know, I personally feel super grateful of just the opportunity. And I know you feel the same way, just coming up with some amazing women on the publishing yeah. side that have set such a high bar and, and high standards on just how to move across this very interesting, abstract, multi-dynamic part of the business um, to just also having the opportunity to, to just like carve out our own spaces on the AWOL side as the company has really evolved, so. Definitely. And I think like those the women like Sass and Allison and Sue that we worked with on the publishing side, like they definitely were just like, have been such inspiring people to just see women who have absolutely killed it in their careers up until this point, but also so willing to kind of help you and like you can learn from them and, um, yeah, I think we've been so lucky to to work with those women. So let's, if we take it back to the beginning, why don't you sort of like, just talk about like where you started, like your influences, like how you kind of got to where you are now, because I think it'd be really good just to start from the beginning. Perfect. Cool. So I grew up in Lima, Peru, um, in South America. I My parents actually are both engineers and they... Um, met in college back in Peru, and then my dad got a scholarship to go to school in Pennsylvania. So long story short, I actually was born in America, out of luck. Um, And that really, I guess, defined my trajectory because my parents knew the value of me having American citizenship. They sent me to American school. So I really, you know, I feel blessed. I've grown up bilingual and and very much bicultural as well. Um, And yeah, I, you know, went to this international school in Peru, um, you know, funny enough, even back then before streaming, you know, was buzzing like it is today, I was, 
you know, I grew up on the Shins and the Arctic Monkeys and this whole kind of like indie rock scene that actually thrives in South America and is just as massive as pop music at times. Um, yeah, and um, I guess from there, I yeah, went, I you know, worked really hard at school knowing that that was like, I guess, my ticket out as it was for my parents. And um, in Peru, as you can imagine, it's pretty traditional in terms of career paths. You know, there's pretty much like the three career paths. There's like business, you know, health and law. Um, and my parents really wanted me to be a doctor. You know, they're both very academic and, you know, a lot of just like, I guess my coming of age was realizing that that was not really my personal dream. And a lot of it also just came from the fact that, you know, I went to school at USC and, and moved to LA, which honestly was a massive part of my development in my identity and just my, I guess, creative confidence and my understanding of what I'm capable of doing outside of an academic space. Um, that was just like a massive pivotal opportunity for me, you know, being out in LA and meeting just a lot of people in the music scene. And it just really, I mean, there's no words. Like it really just rocked my world. It opened my mind and my just, I don't know, understanding of the world in such a just massive, massive way. And I guess like, I feel really lucky that I've just had this unique route and experience in which, you know, while I've grown up in a country very far from the industry, I've had an opportunity of just like falling into it or just meeting peers because that's such a massive part of just like being able to get in the industry. So in terms of my career in music specifically, I decided I wanted to work in the music industry during my last two years of college. So it was really too late for me to change my major. I obviously dropped pre-med, but I did stick to a science degree. And then I just took it upon myself to learn about the industry as much as possible. So I took a ton of internships during the school years and the summers, and I took a couple of music industry courses at USC. I joined the USC Concerts Committee and went to a bunch of shows around LA, and I was just so inspired by the industry as a whole. And then I graduated college, and a couple months later, I landed an internship at Cobalt. And Cobalt was such a dream company for me because being from another country, I really wanted to work for a company that had a global footprint and a global approach and just also stood up for the right things in, in the business. So Cobalt really has been that for me since day one. And I joined the same team three weeks into my internship. Lucky enough, my supervisor got promoted and his position became available. So took his position in the sync team doing sync licensing, did that for a couple of months. And another really lucky moment was Sass Metcalf, the head of A&R globally, who's been a part of Cobalt since day one, uh, took a notice of me and asked me to be her assistant and really took me under her wing. And that was really my first, you know, real exposure to A&R. And I felt so lucky working under such an incredible female leader and just overall working with such a female-led team from Sass to Sue to Jamie to the Amandas, Emily, Anna, so many incredible women that I got to learn from and did that for a couple of years and then moved over to the AWOL business, to their courting side. And yeah, overall, I just feel so grateful that I've been able to grow with a company that has also evolved and is also just standing up for the right things in music. Yeah, I mean, and I'd love to hear from you as well on just like your story and how, how you just got in the music industry because I think it's just, it's so interesting how, you know, once you're in, it's just such a you know tight community and it's an amazing community, yeah. but it is so hard to really know how to get there if you don't really have, you know, other peers or people like you to, you know, look up to and, and understand how that looks. Definitely. I think in the industry, there's a lot of ways in if you know people who are already in the industry. And like, there's definitely a lot of like internships and things that are offered to not so widely, I think, out to the general public in the way that they should be. Um, and similar to you, like I didn't have any 
family connections or you know friend family friend connections in the industry it was very much like how do I get into an industry that I know that I love but without having any connections or living in the the main city for music in the UK which is London like I grew up in Edinburgh which is um city in Scotland and Edinburgh is a great yeah (laughs) Edinburgh is a great city but it doesn't have a huge huge music scene it's definitely there's a city called Glasgow in Scotland that at the point of which I was growing up had an amazing music scene great club scene like such cool artists and DJs and producers coming through but I grew up in this sort of sister city which is amazing big for culture but it didn't have a huge music industry for me that I just really felt like I identified with and also being black growing up in Scotland like it's it's a predominantly white place and it for me as soon as I went to London where it's just so much more multicultural and musically much more multicultural I was like this is the place for me and me and my friend we were like 16 and we hatched this plan like right how do we move to London like we've got to just get out of here and (laughs) get yeah (laughs) we were watching I think we were watching like the mobos or something and, and on tv and we were like right we've got to get to London so I managed to convince my parents um, to let me go to like a music college in London um, so moved down and just sort of started going out to gigs a lot just lo- I loved it like I loved everything about it and I studied music production at college so that gave me a lot of time to like be in the studio meet with artists get people in rooms together in terms of like putting songwriters and artists together and that's where I learned what A&R was because I didn't know what it was like I'd never heard of it growing up or anything like that and I definitely didn't know that there were women who worked in A&R like I kind of thought the stereotype of a music industry (laughs) person was like a man and that's all I'd seen on like films and things like that so to see that there was this role that was super collaborative and about getting creative people together and getting producers and artists together I just felt like that's really what I want to do. Um, so yeah, I studied at college. I switched and did then did a music business degree. Um, and then that op- opened me up some opportunities for like work experience and internships. And that's where I started to sort of be able to get a foot in the door, I guess. Um, and in my final year at uni, I got the opportunity to, I guess, try out for being a scout at Cobalt Publishing. Um, So that was kind of, yeah, my route in. And it was a college professor who introduced me to a couple of the guys, Sam and Nick, who were amazing A&Rs, Cobalt Publishing. And that was kind of my foot in the door. And then started scouting for them at that point and worked my way up and now takes us to today when I'm a senior a and on the AWOL side, on the recording side. So yeah, that's kind of my journey. But I think that's why things like this are so important because totally. for both of us, like we didn't have an obvious route in like knowing anyone in the industry or even being in cities where it was very obvious, like where the, where the music industry was. Um, so I think that it's just good to be able to open that out more and like share our stories Laura I wondered um if there's been any kind of career points for you where you've just kind of looked back and you've thought like you've thought about your journey so far because I think we're always just like doing it and like working with artists and moving and moving like do you feel like have you had time like this year or last year to really reflect on all the amazing stuff you've done so far and like the artists that you've signed and and the artists you're developing on on AWOL. Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, that's, I had no idea you started music production. That's incredible. And I totally agree. I feel like A&R is a pretty abstract and and immersive role and so many, it it has so many elements to it. And I think that like, there needs to be more education on what we do and, and, you know, both internally at companies and externally, I think it's just like, it can, it can be an abstract role, but um, I totally just like relate to what you said about just like, I love how it's just such an ever evolving role. And like, there's so many parts that like, take that kind of like, more academic side of just like, you know, just like crafting up deals and like, 
you know, mm-hmm. really negotiating and then just also being able to be creatively immersive. Like, I think that's my favorite part about the recording business on, you know, on the, on the A&R side, it's like, not only it's like craft, it's crafting up the songs, but also like, you know, I'm an immensely visual person. I'm really into fashion and just creating a whole world, I guess, around the music. So yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I went to school for cognitive science, so it was a very different <laughs> route for me. Cognitive science pre-med. Wow. Um, my first year at school, I mean, USC was incredible, but my first year at school was absolutely miserable. I mean, I, I'm Latina. I come from like a very warm culture where like it's very collaborative. And as you can imagine, pre-med was, you know, all but that. So yeah, I mean, I guess going back to your question about just like moments in my career, I guess something that just like really sticks out to me um, and we've talked about because I think we both very much have had that journey is like I'm so passionate about bringing forward underrepresented spaces in the music industry and especially in a time where like again even back then I was like you know listening to just like alternative music in Peru like I was like one of the few weird kids in my school to like be on Tumblr like I just like I was a kid of the internet and I feel like that's only grown and I think like a really proud moment for me I guess just like a really just like epiphany moment was like obviously signing creams you know I've worked with you know different artists throughout my career so far but she's you know I guess the first artist with no kind of social backing or or number numerical um you know background or 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 just like justification but rather a true A&R moment in, in in really having this intuitive emotional experience with the music and bringing it to Pete my boss who is been incredibly supportive of me and um just you know a massive part of my success on the AWOL side um and really incentivating me to just like push for what I love and yet you know Creams lives in Tbilisi lives in Georgia small post you know small city in a post-Soviet country she gets her hands on instruments through a lending basis they're super hard to find and nonetheless she produces writes performs you know plays all types of instruments it's such a testament to, I guess, what I wish I would have been back in Peru, you know, like it, it really, I feel like it took me moving to America and really just like understanding my, I guess, grit on like how to move forward in a creative space. So it, it's just so personal for me understanding how much harder that can be being removed yeah. from like the nucleus of just where culture is emerging. Um, so that's been obviously just an immensely just like, I guess, giving back to my younger self moment. Um, yeah, that's and amazing. Yeah, I mean, I love all the artists I work with. I, as you know, I have a pretty personal, deep connection with them. I think like, and I'd love to talk to you about that too, because I think, you know, as women, there are so many qualities in a woman that just like, I don't know, I love being a woman. And I think that like so much of it also just like is connected to like my success in music and and really coming forward with like, you know, I guess my feminine side and, and my just like, I don't know, music is very emotional to me and also just like, the way I connect with my artists it's it's very personal and and you know I know that's also just been a massive part of my success personally because I just you know I'm passionate I love what I do and now I'll fight for the artists that I work with so I'd love to hear from you how you know I guess your experience in the music industry as a woman has been so far and you know any yeah. moments for yourself as well that have you been like able to look back and be like wow like young me in Scotland <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I definitely like what you said really resonates to me I think that I've always felt like whenever I've met artists or have signed artists, like it's it's never felt like a business thing. Although you make business decisions and like deals are very business, it's always felt like a real connection with the artist or I just really care about like the, the art that they're making and the music they're making and wanting to like help further their journey and like help facilitate that for them. Um, and I've just always like, always loved that part of it and it's always felt more personal I guess than just yeah just like a business deal it's always felt much more personal and and that's something that yeah I think I'm really proud of that I've been able to have those connections or being trusted I guess by the artists that I've signed to be part of that journey and part of that team because their music is yeah yeah like I think like uh, I couldn't put myself out it, like the way the artists put themselves out there is just oh, wow. so so inspiring I'm like that's amazing that you could do that so it, it definitely is like very personal and 
I take that really seriously like when I'm working with artists and I think that that's a quality that women I just think I think men have it but I think like women are just always better (laughs) that's why I think like women are just just, yeah the I think they're just the best day in ours like as in because yeah I think nothing's taken lightly like it is it's a very serious thing to like work with an artist so yeah I'm really I love that aspect of it and just I'm really excited for the future with with artists I'd love Um, to I'd love to hear from you just how your journey and in finding your voice because again like you know part of the so much part of the job I like to see the job as kind of like twofold in the sense that obviously like so much of our time is in the deal making space and the scouting space and finding the artists that we truly believe in and want to move forward with but then really the work starts when you sign an artist and you just, you know, yeah. I, I like to say, you know, as an A&R, you're kind of like their biggest champion, both internally and externally. And I think that, you know, to your point, like that kind of like intuitive nature of just, I don't know, like some, I don't know, I've had so many moments of just like talking to one of my artists, like just trying to just like get them to feel inspired or motivated. And so much of it happens internally too. Um, mm-hmm. But I guess like, I'd love to hear just like, how you found your voice um, and just like standing up for yourself in a space that, you know, is very competitive and also just like takes a lot of moments that takes a lot of hard conversations as well and moments that you really have to stand up and and speak up for yourself. Definitely. I think at the point when I entered into the industry, like A&R was even more male dominated than it is now. Like I've seen positive change happen in more recent years, but definitely when I entered into the industry, like, it it felt just like super male, super like this sort of like laddie, broy culture. Um, and when I'd look around at like labels and other publishers, there weren't very many black women, women of color, like in A and R positions. There were a few, and there's definitely been great change there. But at the point of when I entered in, like it was hard to see who you could become, like in this journey in this like career um and yeah finding I think finding my voice within that was definitely a process like I think when I first entered in I just wanted to do a really good job and like find a great artist and I would definitely face a lot of like microaggressions and things that came my way that never made made me feel comfortable but those early days I was like oh you know I don't want to I don't know I'm just worried about kind of like upsetting people by challenging stuff yeah or you know you'd be in a meeting and you'd hear something and nowadays I would totally call it out but like when I was like 19 20 I would just be like just kind of scared to challenge stuff and I think that's something that I'm really happy to see that growth like within myself where I know that challenging things is just you got to step out and just say that and not worry about what that person will then think of you because you're doing the right thing by standing up for yourself or calling out the the behavior that you've seen but yeah that's definitely been challenges along the way and the sort of the microaggressions or the very direct aggressions that I think we face in the industry and um, but then I think that having like we were sort of talking about at the start, like the amazing women leadership that we've had and we've seen within the company that we've worked at has been so, so crucial, I think, because it's just seeing how women at the top of their game navigate that and how they deal with certain microaggressions or offensive things that have happened. I think it's just, yeah, seeing that, it just gives you that strength to be like, yeah, I'm going to stand up for myself and... um that's something I feel yeah really lucky to have yeah yeah I think also just like we've been lucky to be around super boss women that not necessarily just like fit a traditional I guess like romanticized idea of what a woman is and like I'd love to just like talk about that a bit with you because I think it's like I mean you know gender norms gender structures are just obviously something that is so embedded to culture and, and to growing up especially within those years like 18 19 like kind of the beginning of becoming a woman or just understanding what that looks like. And I think like for myself, you know, I interned at a bunch of places, you know, major labels, management companies, um, publishing, you know, and, and I felt like, especially at that transitional time, you know, 21, 19, um, just like, I really thought that growing up meant like 
just becoming a little bit more kind of like suited up, put together, and like I guess my favorite part about being at, at Koba Ine well has just been, especially I guess like the girls, the women at Kobo that we've been around, like talk about just like an incredible unique bunch like from Allison to Amanda Sammy cracking a joke and looking incredible as she just like is the silliest person ever like that was so inspiring to me and like I mean I love all the women just like who I worked with on the publishing side but I just have so many memories of like Amanda Sammy especially like bringing me into her office sitting sitting me on her like chair and being like listen up (laughs) like she's like let me just tell you this like like you need to be calling everyone ruthlessly. You need to speak up for yourself. You need, like, that, like, I needed that so much, like, during that initial, I guess, transitory time in my career, and it is such a big part of myself, too, just, like, being Latina, being passionate, being fiery, and, like, I thought I had to kind of, like, repress that to just, like, move forward in my career, and, like, coming to terms with, like, no, that's actually an amazing thing that I should celebrate, and, like, an amazing asset for myself, like, was such a pivotal moment to just, like, growing into myself. Definitely. And that is so incredible to hear you say, because I think that there's a lot of what you just described about, like, being fiery, being, like, standing up for yourself, speaking out that I think in men are really celebrated. Like, those are only seen as positive things and seen as how you become a boss and, like, how you really make moves in the industry. And I think in women, it's still very much like there's a lot of negative words that are used to describe, like, those things that we see as positive certain people Mm -hmm. would be like oh well she's a bit much or like a bit too loud like you still hear those things and I think it's so good that we can push through that and just be ourselves even though there's still often those like negative ways to describe something that is very positive um and it's good to see that change and then like you said like the the women that we've worked with and the women that we've met in the industry like even outside of the company are just such amazing examples of like to not compromise or or to change not to change like who you are yeah and and I'm hopeful that that's going to be just part of what to come moving forward and this like female presence and female energy in companies like ours like working together and I think that's been like such a massive part for me and like meeting other peers like us you know within the company and outside just so many of my close friends you know working in similar jobs to myself and so many females um, has been just truly an amazing journey to grow with them and and have, you know, that support. And, you know, it is such a competitive part of the business, but at the same time, just like understanding that like every artist has a special, special needs and a special home. And like, there's no like one size fits all and and just like celebrating other female successes and and while they celebrate yours. Yeah definitely and it's also I just think like this year and last year it's been great to see there's been so many great like women producers and artists like collaborating just I've seen a lot of like good change in the artists and like producer space too that there's definitely a lot more women producers and mixers coming through and mastering engineers too and that's something that I've just always maybe because I that's why I studied at at uni it's something I'm like oh there's got to be change there like it can't just be men and I feel like we've seen that positive change like happening a bit more Um, and I feel the same way on the industry side like you know I think that obviously this year has been monumental and just like unpacking just like racial issues not only in the U.S. but around the world but also just like inequalities in general and I think that you know, while we see more and more diversity in the music, so much of that is going to come with seeing diversity on the front line of who is signing those deals and who is working those projects. So, you know, it's not only diversifying the music, but also diversifying the workspaces, because that's where the, you know, it's, it's amazing that you can come from a different background and from a different just like space and music and I can come from another like that's how it should be. That's how every music company should be. Definitely. Yeah. And I think also like, you want the team to be a reflection of the artists that you that are coming through, but also a reflection of like the reality of the world of like who this music is going to. That's where I've always thought it's so wild that there might be a company that's like predominantly white men when mm-hmm. the the art that you're putting out to people like you're not just marketing to like 
to white men so why does your company look like that like just even the basic level of it is that I think and that's where it's good to see that positive change that's happening but there's still obviously so much more that can be done so yeah totally. I think that's why these yep. sort of conversations are are so good and so important yeah I've, I've been I don't know if you've been a part of just I know Victoria Needs on our team just started this really cool thing, the donut kind of like moving around and, and yeah, matching you with that. different females on the company. And, you know, AWOL as a whole is such a unique company because we're, you know, the only company that truly works on a global scale that way from just all different territories. And that's been such an inspiring part of just like quarantine and being able to connect with women from all just across sides of the business within the company and, and ages. And yeah, it's it's just so important to just have you know, figures to just look to and, and, and be able to just connect to on, on an industry level. Yeah, definitely. I think that's been so good. And also it's great when we're not in the office. I feel like I've met loads of women in the company who I hadn't met when we were in the office or were in like other territories, not in the UK. So it's a really great way to just further connect with people, which has been, oh, no. yeah, so, so good. How has your time been during just working from home and, and, you know, this really just insanely changing time in the way that we work? Because our job is so in person and and so much of the job, you know, is that kind of like special moment with the artists and their team or, or even just like, I guess, like the reward of just like working so hard on a campaign and then going to a show and like just yeah. having that, you know, that moment is something that I just can't wait for it to be back. Totally. Yeah, I've, I feel the same. I mean, it's definitely been like up and down. Overall, I feel there's definitely, I feel a lot of privilege to be having a role that's been, and a job that's been so consistent throughout this time. And where there's been, I think that the aspect, the side of music that we're on has generally been able to like move as normal in terms of like releasing, the releasing of music. But what has been challenging is, yeah, getting to know people on Zoom, definitely, especially new artists, because, yeah, I just think there's so much about a a meeting of a new artist where it's much more comfortable if you're just like in a neutral space or you're, yeah, you're at a gig or you're, yeah, going for coffee somewhere. So getting to know people on Zoom has definitely been a challenge for me. Um, And also just like, not being able to go to the studio as much or just go to those spaces that are just so music focused. Whereas when you're sitting in your flat and like you can hear that the washing machine's on or something, like it doesn't feel like that music focused. <laughs> <Magic> down <laughs> and taken away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, I think there there are some great silver linings for, for I mean, I hope for everyone. I think that like, you know, I totally agree with you, but I, I do think that like, it's given me a lot of time to think things through ideas through. And I, I feel like it's been like a big, I mean, I guess like for me, it's been, it's been a big <clears throat> move forward in my career during COVID, which is like, I just joke about yeah. a lot. Cause I'm just like, this is so funny. Like all these things lined up and then boom, like <laughs> COVID hit. But then I've just had these incredible campaigns to work through during COVID, which I feel grateful for. Um, but yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Just like having that magic of just being, in person having that in-person connection is something that I can't wait for it to be back but I also think that there's been immense value especially in the way that we work with you know with a very just global approach and us connecting even you know mm-hmm. um you know as you know yeah, I work with mm-hmm. I work with a lot of international artists so I think it's been like nice yeah. to be I can be anywhere in the world in a day <laughs> yeah that's been such a cool thing that's happened I feel like especially between UK and like us times or west coast anyway we've been able to like speak a lot more because everyone's at home like normally around this time there might be like a show on or like a gig and things like that so it's that's been a real silver lining i think like being able to connect more from the uk like globally and do calls with people who normally like you would probably just wait until you got to go over there to meet people so I've really loved that aspect of it and I think that's really also helped how we've how we work as a company um and yeah I've been super appreciative of like anyone in the LA team who's like a morning person and able to do calls at this time (laughs) because it wouldn't be the same for me like I'm definitely much more of like an evening person than a morning person (laughs) 
<laughs> this worked out then. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Well, it's so great chatting with you, I guess. Like, I think it would be good to just get talk a bit about just like advice on like, you know, yeah. young females trying to get into the industry. Just like advice, I guess you'd like to hear. You would have liked to hear yourself back then. Definitely. I think we should definitely share that. I mean, my biggest advice, and I wish I'd listened to this like at the time, when I was younger it's just like put yourself out there more like don't worry about you know if you you approach someone and about an opportunity or a job and they don't have anything going like it's just keep going and really put yourself out there like that's was my on reflection I think I was quite good at doing that but now looking back I'm like I would have done that way more and just been like less scared to put myself out there and then I think also to just really trust your gut when you hear music that you connect with and that you just really love and really fight for it because sometimes like the the person the people you're trying to convince might not fully understand it it might be like something that just you really connect with but I think if you really connect with it and you play it to a couple friends and they love it too like there's there's an audience there and there's something to build on and um yeah that's that's something I think is just like really believing in your your feeling towards music or an artist that you come across and just really go with that so those are probably my two things what about yours yeah I definitely relate to that just like following my intuition and my gut in music because it's just what has gotten me here and I guess another thing talking about intuition something that I just looking back to you know my younger years in the industry is like also following that intuition with who you surround yourself both in the industry and, and outside of it, I think that so much of my growth really came from just like making those decisions of, you know, these people aren't doing me right or these people just really incentivate me or see my light, you know, friends, peers, you know, and everything mm -hmm. across. And it really, you know, it goes along with what you were saying about just like when you're younger, you're just kind of like trying to mold yourself in. You feel happy to be there. You're just... You know, yeah. you're just trying to figure out your place. Um, but just looking back, I, I, I feel really, I guess, grateful about my intuition. I feel like there's just been a lot of, like, growth in, like, making those active decisions and who I surround myself with and, and just, like, who I connect with. And, and, you know, coming up with those people has just been the most rewarding thing. Definitely. I think that's such great advice. And that's why it's good to have these types of conversations for yeah young women who are coming into the industry just so that they can like hear that how they're feeling isn't if they are feeling any of these things it's like we felt it too or we went through it too um yeah. well, I'm so glad we've had this conversation and yeah, thank so you for sharing time. everything I mean I've learned lots as well and we've known each other <laughs> for such a long time so that's been really cool yeah likewise I feel so lucky that I get to work with you and and you know that we've come up together and and yeah. so much more to come I mean like it was it's such an exciting time right now and yeah I feel really lucky to be part of the team with you and and so much so much exciting stuff coming definitely okay well have a good rest of your morning um and I'll see you on Monday okay, talk to you soon <laughs> bye, bye.